Welcome back. My name is Hadra Stewart. I'm the head of the languages department at Kingston Technical High. And today I will share a few tips about the City and Gales English Skills exam. Let's look at our objectives for today. What shall we achieve by the end of today's lesson? So, candidates should be able to answer questions based on a stage three reading and writing specimen paper set on the theme of success. You should also be able to explain the various types of activities given on a stage three reading and writing English skills exam paper and identify the specific things that examiners look for in a stage three extended writing task and the marks allotted to each. All right, let's do a recap of some very important points about this English skills exam. So there are two major components of the exam. We have the speaking and listening component, all right? And it values one third of your overall marks. So one week before your exam, City and Gills will send you your subtopic for the exam and you will prepare, all right? Then we get to the reading and writing exam, which values two thirds of your overall mark. The exam is for two hours. Remember, take along your dictionary and thesaurus and remember, have your blue and or black ink pen, absolutely no gel ink. Now at stage one we and stage two, for the speaking and listening exam, you have a listening comprehension to do, followed by a group discussion and a reflection. At stage three, you have a listening comprehension, group discussion, reflection, then you have your individual presentation, which should be about three to five minutes long, and then your peer assessment. It simply means that you're going to get a chance to assess one of your peers. Of course, we have to talk again about the grading system. Everybody is working for a, of course, you're working for a distinction, and you will have to score 80 to 100% in order to get that distinction. You believe you can, and I believe you can. For the merit, you have to score 65 to 84%. Pass is 50 to 64%, and failure, 0 to 49. And remember, I've said before, the little things do matter. So make sure you have that plan. Make sure you write in paragraphs. Make sure you proofread your work. All of those grades will add up. Okay, so we have spoken about the City and Guilds word list. And if you have not yet received yours, go on the City and Guilds website at www.cityandguilds.com and access your list. So there is a word list for every stage. Now, these lists of words are related to the theme, right? The words are not for spelling purposes, but they are to expose you to the jargon or the terminologies associated with this year's theme, which is media and communications. Candidates are encouraged to become acquainted with these words that they can use in their extended writing task. Remember, everybody will have to do one extended writing task. It is also very likely that the candidates will encounter some of these words in the source documents given in the examination. So you want to make sure that you put yourself a step. All right, now let's explore a specimen paper. We are going to look at a stage three specimen paper based on the theme, success. Are you ready? All right. So we are looking at an article and it is entitled Helping Youth to Believe in Themselves. And this is document one. Remember at the stage three level, you get three source documents. As I arrived at the Jamaica Conference Center in downtown Kingston, the room was already humming, packed with school children, teachers and assorted officials. I squeezed into a lone chair by the door next to a petite young woman in a powder blue suit tapping gently on her cell phone. For the next hour or so, the doors were clogged with belated groups of despondent students and staff looking around for vacant seats. There were very few. Everything started on time, perhaps because the Governor General Sir Patrick Allen was there and one cannot be late for him. And why was Sir Patrick present? It was a national youth conference supported by his own I Believe initiative, IBI. With his very considerable influence and an enthusiastic band of workers, IBI has made a great impact with all kinds of empowering activities for youth taking place. Sir Patrick told us that the idea took root in February 2009, and after careful planning, IBI launched in May 2011. The aim is not only to inspire and motivate, but to show young people their options. 
Even in these difficult times, the IBI seeks to give practical advice, as well as financial and moral support. As thousands make their way into the increasingly hazardous and uncertain world of unemployment, career development and youth entrepreneurship, career development and youth entrepreneurship are at the forefront of IBI. IBI is all about believing in one's abilities. Its slogan says, there is nothing wrong with Jamaica that cannot be fixed by what is right with Jamaica. And we know that there is plenty right with Jamaica. Yes, we just need to harness it for progress. In his welcoming remarks, Sir Patrick Allen told his audience, with focus and hard work, you can do anything. And he is absolutely right. There are no shortcuts. This is true now more than ever. Wishing all our young people much success. So this is document one. Now let's look at a sample task. The instruction says read the documents in the source document and answer the following questions. Now remember you are getting three source documents. You can choose to read all three at the beginning and I would encourage it so that you have a very good knowledge of what they are about. And then as you go through and answer the questions, then you go back and reread each of those documents. So this one says you're to read the documents and answer the following questions. Questions one to five are about document one. All right, so you zoom in now on document one, and this question values one mark. It says, and you are to tick the correct answer, as I've done there. The main purpose of the document is to A, advertise a student conference, B, promote a government initiative, C, review young people's options, D, discuss initiatives for work. Our answer is B, so we tick, and that's one mark. Next one says, Identify three, please pay attention to the details, they matter. Identify three features that the writer uses to make the document easier to read. And we know that this question is asking you for organizational features. So we talk about heading, images, and color. Now you are not able to see all of those because I put the information on the slides, but your source document will have all of those organizational features. Sample question. According to the Governor General, what is required to be successful? You get one mark for this answer, and it is focus and, and hard work. So make sure you have focus and hard work. The vocabulary in the first paragraph has been used to do which of the following? This question values one mark, and it says tick, tick the correct answer. Is it to encourage students to be on time? to motivate and support young people, to show how important the conference is, or to give the reader a visual image of the event. And you will agree with me that D is the answer, so we tick D. Next one says, give two phrases. Focus on those keywords now. You're not being asked for sentences, you're being asked for phrases. Tick two phrases in the third paragraph, and remember we're talking about document one, which means to have a powerful effect. And this values two marks. So we look for the phrase, not a sentence. If you give the sentence with the phrase, you are not going to get the mark. So there were many phrases we, we could have chosen increasingly hazardous and inspire and motivate. And here is a little reminder. A phrase is a group of words that stands together as a single grammatical unit typically as part of a clause or a sentence. A phrase does not contain a subject and a verb, and consequently it cannot convey a complete thought. Please remember that. All right, so we move on now to source document two, and this one is a book review. Memoirs of a Country Girl by Dr. Sandra M. Palmer. This is the inspirational real-life story of a Jamaican country girl who dreamed of making her mother proud by becoming successful. This motivating account recounts the author's life from childhood, dreaming under a star up a tree to becoming a successful IT businesswoman, mother, and university lecturer with an earned PhD. This enjoyable and engaging book takes two hours at most to read. Sandra Palmer bases her life on her experience that no matter who you are, you can dream big. If you can dream it, you can do it. 
Her easy writing style creates the feeling of a conversation with a trusted friend about deeply personal but important details of her life with no area of limits. The stories and experiences will touch the emotions of anyone reading. Keeping you hooked. Readers will eagerly turn each page as Sandra reveals her competitiveness at high school, her devastation at not being head girl, and her success over her rival. She relates her shock, embarrassment, and disappointment at failing her first attempt at the National Common Entrance Examination, and her relief and joy at succeeding the following year. The huge motorbike accident which nearly cost her life and her university dream is a powerful tale of resilience. The absorbing accounts of her first Kingston job, of failing her first year at the University of the West Indies, and the miracle that saved her from dropping out will stir anyone to persevere. Overcoming the odds. After her graduation, she became a success as a sales professional, then as a female entrepreneur, competing mostly against males worldwide while demonstrating a gusty character to overcome the odds. Readers everywhere will also be inspired by her determination in her life-changing quest to complete her PhD. It is an emotional roller coaster with powerful lessons in perseverance. Sandra Palmer's Memoirs of a Country Girl, King Publishing, available online and in bookstores, gives people of every age, gender, calling, profession, and walk of life a powerful reason to dream big. Her fascinating life story will inspire and give hope for generations to come. And this book review is written by Esther Williams, and it was written on the 29th of October, 2017. All right, good. So let's look at a sample question related to document two. It says questions six to nine are about document two. You're to identify three obstacles Sandra Palmer faced before she went to university, and you will earn three marks if you have done so correctly. So one, you could talk about her devastation at not being head girl. Another one, failing her common entrance exam, and the motorbike accident which nearly cost her life. If you have done that, you will get your three marks. Next one says, identify three personal qualities, pay attention to that word, which have helped Sandra Palmer to overcome the odds. And this values three marks. So we can talk about her competitiveness, her determination to succeed, and of course, her perseverance. All right, excellent. Let's go to another question. Which one of the following words could best replace shock? in the fourth paragraph of document two. So you will always get very specific and clear instruction. So we're looking at synonyms now. And you're to underline, don't tick this time, you're to underline the correct answer. All right, and this value is one mark. So is it disregard, disbelief, dishonor, or disrespect? Yes, our answer is disbelief. And we have a similar one. Which one of the following words could best replace fascinating in the final paragraph of document two? And this value is one mark. And again, you're told to underline the correct answer. So we're looking at fascinating, a synonym. Is it caring, critical, compelling, or complacent? Oh, yes, it is C, compelling. So here we have a multiple choice question. You're to tick the correct answer. It values one mark. What is Esther's opinion of the book? Is it indifferent, negative, positive, or neutral? Oh, yes, it is positive. So we have ticked C. Excellent. Now, we go to document three. Now, I will not be reading document three to you, but I just wanted to have an idea of how the questions can be asked. Now, it says documents, sorry, questions 10 to 13 are about document three. Identify three main events which enabled Ju Kitchen to develop his business, and you're to tick the three correct answers below, and you will earn three marks. So we have many options, right? Employees were innovative and enthusiastic drove to different locations in Canada, formed partnerships and set up franchises, produced a consistently good quality product, graduated from Glenmere High School, opened manufacturing plant to meet demands. And our answers are formed partnerships and set up franchises, produce a consistently good quality product, and opened manufacturing plants to meet demand. And we have ticked our answers. Next one. When did the two juicy factories open? You just simply give the dates. So you could say in the 1990s and August 2001. Two marks. Next one. 
which one of the following sentences summarizes the article? So we're being asked now for a summary, and you're to tick the correct one, and you earn one mark. Is it exceptional locations, guarantee sales, a dedicated workforce creates demand, working with family solves difficult problems, or energy and enthusiasm are key to achievement? Or answer is D, so we have ticked it. Here's another one. Name one, only one group of people who will benefit from Juki Chin's future plans. Now, you could have chose, you have two. It could be employees or customers, but we're going to choose one. So you can choose employees, or you could say workers or staff, or you could just simply say customers. Another question, and this values one mark. What does the packaging show about the success of Juki's company? The answer is that they are Jamaica's number one patty brand. All right, this one is interesting. Questions 15 and 16 are about all the documents, so all three source documents. Use a dictionary to give the definitions of the words below. You must have your dictionary in the exam with you. Now, they want the meaning for harness and harness as a verb, and it is used in document one. They want the meaning for calling as a noun in document two, and the meaning for essentially as an adverb in document three. Please make sure that you pay close attention to the instruction. Right? Another question says, which documents are about people who have developed successful businesses? The correct answer you're to tick and it is documents two and three okay questions 17 and 18 are about grammar and punctuation so this is the one about grammar and you are to circle the grammatical options at present there were or is or are seemingly endless possibilities for levi's roots popular brand and she or he or it continues to bring the sunshine of the caribbean to all its ventures while popularizing the spicy flavors of his Jamaican heritage and remaining true choice truly to his recipe for success. And the answers are circled. So it's R, he, and true, and you would have earned three marks. Good? This one says you're to insert. That means you are going to put in, okay? The three correct punctuation marks. And remember, we need these three marks, all right? So let's not forget that track athletics is to Jamaicans what football is to Brazilians. Usain Bolt, Jamaica's most successful athlete, has always put his country's success at sprinting down to the passion of its fans. Their expectations have been his motivation. So we have added the apostrophe right here, right, between the T and the S, so that's the contraction for let us. Then we have added the full stop after Brazilian. So, of course, Usain has to start with a capital U, and then we have the apostrophe again between the Y and the S to show that the success belongs to the country. Good? All right, so you have done very well. Give yourselves a clap. All right. Now, the extended writing task for, sex for stage three values 35 marks. And you've seen this one before. Write an article about someone successful that you admire. And you're, here are your bulleted points now. You must include information about who the person is. What makes a person successful? Why you admire this person? You are to use 300 to 400 words. You must write at least 300 words. And look at this. Do not use any information from documents one, two, or three. So that means you have to come up with your own successful person. Please pay attention to that instruction. Now let's quickly look at the rubric for the extended writing activity. Let's look at how you can earn your marks, okay? So you earn maximum of two marks if you use a plan that is appropriate and includes all the key points. And remember that you're not going to write a rough draft now. You are going to jot down your notes under each of the bulleted points. You get one mark if you write at least 300 words. Then we're going to look at the content, the type of information that you put in your extended writing. You can earn three marks if you write an article about someone successful that you admire and include all the bulleted points. Who the person is, what makes the person successful and why you admire the person. You get one mark if your writing is legible throughout. That means it is clear and easy to read. 
Of course, we've spoken about this so many times because it is so important. You get one mark for writing in paragraphs. And remember, you go in a new line and you move away from the margin to indicate that you're starting a new paragraph. All right? You get two marks now for format and structure. Right? And they must be appropriate for an article. So remember, your article is going to have a headline. You remember, you're going to write the name of the writer, and you can add the date if you so choose. And you can include some of the organizational features that we have spoken about. Your tone. Your tone is your attitude towards what you're speaking or writing about. So you can earn a maximum of three marks. Right? If your tone, your expression, and your vocabulary are appropriate for an article. Three marks if your writing is clear and coherent. Three marks now if the information is logically sequenced throughout the article. You can earn an additional three marks for, correctly, for using a full range of sentence structures. So you have simple sentence, compound, and at least one complex sentence throughout. Oh yes, spelling is extremely important you can earn a maximum of four marks for correct spelling. Correct spelling to stage three of common words and relevant keywords, including those from work, study, and everyday life. And four marks for punctuation. Remember, we spoke about that. So your capital letters, your end punctuation marks, your commas, your apostrophe. And one mark is going to be deducted if you write in full caps. All right? Four marks maximum for grammar and one for proofreading. Practice, practice, practice. I will always say it because it works, right? Anthony Robbins says, it's what you practice in private that you will be rewarded for in public. And I'm sure that all of you want to be publicly rewarded with a distinction. So practice, practice, practice. Continue to prepare for your exams. That's all the time we have for today. Thanks for watching. All the best.